Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome, and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's as simple as pressing the subscribe button, tapping the bell, and making sure to select all to receive all of my future postings. Before we begin things today, I would like to give a shout out to a channel that I am so incredibly honored first of all to give a shout out and inspired by many of us are already familiar with them but for those of you who are not you are in for a huge treat victoria mckenzie childs the art form they share everyone with the world is so creatively unique their world is everything kind and playfully colorful. Oh my goodness, and that's just mildly putting it. At their channel, they take you to the sea where their home is. It is here where the journey begins on the Yankee. Jump on over to their channel and let them know the little blue fly sent you. You will not be disappointed. So today I would like to share with you all how to transform farmhouse decor into French country pieces. Many of us have farmhouse decor pieces that we love and other pieces that we are just simply tired of. So for those of you that are looking for a change in your decor and don't want to go out and spend tons of money, this video is for you. So that being said, let's begin. Shall we? So now we're going to begin working with this piece I purchased from Hobby Lobby. And we're going to be working with several different acrylic paints today. I do know I'm not quite sure which ones I'm going to use. See, that's a nice rich color, warm color right there. We're just sort of gonna go with things today and um, just see what colors will be used. But for sure, the fawn will be used and the antique wax. This was purchased from Michaels and the other paint came from Walmart. And now I'm just going through a few of my paints here because I'm trying to find one that will work well with the fawn color that will help highlight the color and I don't necessarily want to go a gray this one might work hazelnut oh as you can see here though um, I need to shake it up this one needs to get mixed up a little bit but it just might work. So I'll take you along and we will see what colors I will end up using. So again, this piece, it is a farmhouse piece, as you can see, that was at Hobby Lobby for $30 and I purchased it for 15. I will be using gold acrylic paint by Liquitex and this can be purchased anywhere. Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's. But I will, um, I'll start down here on the lower portion of this piece. And I wanted to use a smaller brush because then I could have, um, I wanted more control. So I, I just didn't feel like going and doing quite a bit of correction. And when you use larger brushes, you just don't, at least I don't, I don't have as much control. 
So I'm just gonna go around the top edge with this small um, flat brush. And I'm actually going to be putting three coats of gold on. It just, it always gives me my desired look, putting on the three coats. As you can see with this brush, there is great, I'm having great control. I'm not getting the gold all over the bottom of the florals. It takes a little bit more time because, you know, we're working with um, a smaller surface because of the brush, but that's okay. And then I'm going to paint underneath as well. When I purchased this piece, I kind of knew where I was going to go with the bottom portion of this piece, but I wasn't quite sure what I, how I was going to transform the top. And I'm, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I'm still not quite sure. <laughs> And again, I'll go over the bottom lip of the rim. So here I have my three coats. And now I'm going to the weaving, the basket weaving. I will be painting the inside gold. So I decided to start on the inside because when I add the other color in, I'm less likely to get it up on the weave, if that is making sense to you all. If I was to put the flat color down first, well, there's a lot of weaving, as you can see here, that needs to be painted, which, you know, that makes room for, um, many mistakes. So I'm just going to go through and paint all the inside and the top portion of the weaving before I put down the base color I'm going to be using. But it's already, what's great about this piece is the pattern's already here. The gorgeous Harlequin pattern. I don't have to make it, it's here. And it offers fabulous depth. I didn't realize till later on how much depth it really, um, this weaving really adds to this piece. So now I have completed all of the basket weave. I'm loving it, loving it. As you can see, there's quite a bit of bleed over, but that's fine. Just by placing the gold on, just added so much dimension. 
Now I'm going to use my go-to paint. This is my my black acrylic chalk paint. I know many of you go, it says chalkboard. Yes, it does say chalkboard. But I'm telling you, everyone, this is the best black paint to work with. I have done many, many furniture pieces with this paint, and it can be purchased at Michael's. It is very thick. You know, some blacks, the, the chalk paint, I'm going to use a flat tip brush. But some blacks, they can have like a gray tone to them. You know, not the true, rich um, black color. And this one has a bit of a, a point to it. So a flat edge and then one that has a little bit of a, of a finer point. So the trick on this one is going to be, again, have, I'm having to use small brushes so that I can keep control. Yeah, I, whenever I, you know, do create I just, um, you know, I try not to, you know, rush things. <laughs> it's funny as I say that, as this is, I have the speed up, but I try to um, take my time when painting. So I'm really having to be careful in the corners. So I decided to use the finer tip brush just to paint inside the corners and then the flat tip brush to finish things off. Look at that, just two done and I am loving this piece already. At this point, all I, all, all I could think about was, oh, there's so many more to go. As you can see, we just have three painted so far and there's already so much depth and visual interest just by having three of them. And all it takes, everyone, is just, I mean, truly, just a little bit of time and patience, some very inexpensive chalk paints, and, of course, that fabulous farmhouse piece to be transformed. Yeah, I got a little bit up there, but no worries. I'm sure many of you have those farmhouse pieces at home that you are just quite bored with. Just pull out the paints and, and give it some fabulous French country color. Just beautiful. So much depth in that piece. 
and I just went ahead and just painted inside the corners because I was getting tired of having going just you know step by step you know one at a time so now I'll go in with my flat tip brush and continue painting no more fussing with the corners now when you're doing this you'll see like little pieces of gold here and there and you might even see some of the white coming through don't even let that bother you because when we put in when we put on the antiquing wax you won't see it how stunning now don't let and I also painted the bottom rim but don't let all this shiny gold get to you because I am going to calm down the tone again I'm going to use a small flat brush to go around the bottom rim. And I'm just sort of pushing, tucking the brush underneath the rim because then I won't make the mistake if I go the other direction by painting right on, right on top of it. Because it, it does take a while to paint over black. So I finished the bottom and I added in some sweet little gold polka dots. I had this foam brush right here and as you can see this is my smallest one it's too big so I just went ahead and used the end of the handle Now comes the exciting part, the part I really don't know what I'm going to do. So I did start things off using a paint um, that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. And it is, I, I'm not sure if... I show the bottle or not but it is um, at Hobby Lobby and it's called oatmeal and it's just giving it that nice aged color and feel And you can see some of the white pieces coming through, and that's okay. So now I'm going to dip my brush into the fawn color and add small highlights on the tips of the leaves. So I'm just going to gently brush over. So. I place my brush in the paint and then I tap it off a little bit on a plate or a napkin and I just brush it over and as you can see it just leaves little touches and it's helping to give that soft 
aging effect. And again, when you paint this, if you decide to paint this particular piece, because it can be found in the um, spring decor aisle, it's okay if you see some of the white come through because this whole piece, I'm going to be going over it with the aging wax. So, so far we started with the oatmeal paint and now we're doing, a, we're doing a dry brushing technique with the fawn paint. Now, when you look at the roses now, you can see chippy goodness, right? <laughs> Always the chippy goodness. I just used a cloth and placed it in water and rubbed it over the edges of the leaves. So, this right here, huge mistake. I had to correct it. I went over it with antiquing wax. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this part's fine. I'm now going to warm up all this gold I'm not sure if I shared it but boy I had a blooper the whole top part the floral well I didn't do the whole part just a little I put that wax on it and oh no I had to go back and repaint the floral up at top so I'm just patting off the wax making sure to get in those grooves. And as you can see, just by putting on one application, it is warming things up. I'm gonna put on a second. Sometimes I go and I put on three coats. It just depends on how warm I want it to look. Make sure to pat. Now I'm going to add more color up on top. I'm going with this light green acrylic paint. This was purchased from Michaels and the fawn paint and that was purchased from walmart and i'm going to use my specialty brush this is a fabulous brush to work with and i'm just going to brush over the top it's the same technique as dry brushing with the flat brush. I'm just now using the specialty brush. So I placed half of the brush in the fawn color and the other half in the green. I'm just dabbing it and then just lightly brushing over to add in some more highlights. So now I have that part completed. And as you can see here, I have one leaf painted and I used the hazelnut. And this was purchased from Walmart. And by adding in this color with the specialty brush, 
it just really um it helped pull from the the gold tones from the bottom And even though I'm looking for the aged effect, I still want it to look like it has some life to it. Not just one tone. And as you can see, we're still seeing those little white pieces coming through. And again, that's okay. I hope you all can see how it is starting to come um, to life a little bit more adding on this color to the leaves. Now I'd like you to take notice to this one right up at front. I decided I wanted to pull in some green. And we're going to be using this light green acrylic paint that was purchased from Michaels. And I'm going to mix a little bit of wax in with the paint. So it's pretty much like a a teaspoon of the green paint and just a couple drops of the wax. And I'm going to use a fan brush and just brush over the tips. And it's just by staying on the tips, I, all I'm adding is dimension. I'm giving each floral bud dimension. And as I'm adding the color up at top, it just is making the bottom just really look even, um, it's just really bringing out the richness. So I'm very happy with the touches of green that I added. And here's what the green looks like right here. So again, it's the green paint with just a couple drops of the wax. So 
So now that it's all painted up and has just a little bit of chippy goodness here and there, I'm now going to add the final touch, which is the polycrylic. I'll, I will be using clear gloss on this one. What this will do is really give it a nice candied look and feel. Now be careful when applying this because as you can see, it's white and um, milky if you add too much and you have to get all of that out. Because if you don't, it will dry just like that. You will see this white milky clump on your piece and you don't want that. <laughs> So really, um, the, the first one was a bit of a mistake. I had just a little bit too much on there. Make sure to um, really uh, wipe your brush off well. And I like to go over all of my pieces two times with the polycrylic. So as you can see down at the bottom, you see all these little, little white pools of poly. Just do your best to go in there with the tip of your brush and remove it. And look, just something simple, just a simple farmhouse decor piece that has been transformed into fabulous French country with just a little bit of paint. And it did take me two days to do this piece, but not all day, just for a few hours. Absolutely love the bottom. And I will be adding two coats up at top. And the poly just really enhances color. Okay, she has a couple gorgeous coats on her. You can see the wonderful chippy goodness coming through. And then you can see right here, these few do not have any poly on them yet.
I keep telling myself, Bev, this was only $15. Because I had paint on hand. $15 and a little bit of time. When I get finished with this piece, I'm actually going to take you outside with me so you can really get the true colors of this piece. Because outside it doesn't know whether it wants to be sunny or cloudy. couldn't be more pleased. And here she is. Absolutely stunning. Farmhouse to French country. So do not rid of your farmhouse decor. Have fun painting it to your own perfection. <laughs> <laughs> 